Hello there. We're here today with Wojtek Figiel, who is an experienced re-speaker and interpreter. Uh, Wojtek, welcome. It's great to have you here. Could you tell us what's your experience with interlingual re-speaking? Well, first of all, I have to say that uh, my background is in uh, simultaneous interpreting. So I've been doing this for more than a decade. And uh, with that in mind, uh, several years ago, I think about five years ago or six years ago, I started doing intralingual uh, re-speaking assignments. And uh, about three years ago, I believe, I started also doing some interlingual assignments. So I've done a, I've, I've done a couple of them. And they were always in different settings with different challenges. So it's a fascinating subject to talk about. Can you walk us through uh, what is uh, the work of an interlingual uh, re-speaker during a live event? What do you do step by step? Well, first of all, you need to get to the venue where the assignment or an event takes place. And once you're there, and it has to be early on, it has to be at least an hour before the event, you should set up all the equipment and you should, you should also test your voice profile because you don't want uh, the environment to harm your performance, so you need to test it beforehand. So it's basically very similar to simultaneous interpreting, but there are many more tasks to be mm, done. And once you're done with this, you need to check uh, whether the dictionary for the assignment is there and whether your pronunciation fits what the dictionary has installed. And then the event starts and uh, you basically, if the event is longer than uh, say 40 minutes or an hour, you basically take turns with another re-speaker and you do your, your job. Plus, if you have interlingual assignments, uh, the added bonus is that you need to interpret while re-speaking. You've been working as a re-speaker for many years, and I suppose you have experienced your fair share of challenges. So what are the difficult situations uh, that you experience as a re-speaker, and how did you deal with them? Well, I've experienced a number of difficult uh, situations and I think all the assignments I've done up until now have been difficult. There are no easy interlingual assignments for me, I would say. And one of the difficulties is that uh, sometimes the volume that you get to the booth and to your headset is not an adequate uh, to work with. So that you need to um, settle with the technicians. Uh, once again, I need to stress the importance of prior preparation. So you need to test all this because if the volume collapses, you're not able to, to work uh, or you have to do some sort of an intervention on the spot. I remember one time we had a situation where the, vol the volume level collapsed or there were some noises and we had to, we were forced to use uh, a simple headset that a person receiving simultaneous interpretation has to use in order to um, receive the signal from the floor. So that's one, that's one potential difficulty. Another potential difficulty is when you have lots of uh, surnames, lots of um, proper names uh, which were not available for you beforehand. So with that, I would suggest uh, the strategy of generalization, if that's a possibility. Of course, one has to judge for oneself if, if this is a possibility, if this is a feasible strategy to use. Uh, but it, it often happens that people from the public intervene during the debate and you don't know their surnames and, and their given names and, and their positions. Um, so that's another difficulty. A third difficulty for me is uh, when the speaker reads out um, a position paper, say, and that's in English, say, I need to interpret it into Polish. And obviously it's very hard to do that. And, uh, well, basically there are no 
golden solutions. If I knew one, I would definitely share this with you. And the fourth difficulty is in the mode of uh, interpreting. So basically, you can use two modes. You can either go directly, say, from English into Polish, or you can go via interpreter. And the, both of these have their own uh, benefits and pitfalls or difficulties and challenges. But sometimes you need to be prepared to switch from one mode to the other. So switch from the floor to the interpreter rendition. Wojtek, as far as I know, you are the only blind re-speaker in Poland. Is re-speaking overall an accessible profession? And are you using any support devices or technologies to help you in your work? I believe that re-speaking profession as a whole is accessible for persons with visual and impairments and especially the, the profession of a re-speaker as such. Moderator might be a different, um, different thing but uh, re-speaker profession is definitely accessible just as simultaneous interpreting is accessible for that matter. And as far as my assistive devices are concerned I love using my braille note taker where I usually would have some uh, point, bullet points of um, say ideas, main theses that people will be um, walking us through during their speeches and that helps me out. I remember uh, uh, on one occasion and that's also one of the challenging situations I've experienced I had to do a sight translation using my braille note taker, um, which I did, so I think it is accessible. That's great news that re-speaking is accessible as a profession. Would you generally recommend it to other people as an exciting profession to get involved in? Oh yes, I would definitely recommend it to many people, especially those who have background in interpreting, but not only to, to these, Intralingual re-speaking, I believe, can be done by people who haven't had any training whatsoever uh, as interpreters. So it's a fascinating profession. It's developing currently and it will be developing in the future. So uh, there are some fascinating opportunities for professional development and for growth and learning on uh, while doing your profession. There are many students who are now taking the ILSA course as they try to become interlingual life subtitlers. What would be your advice to these people? Be systematic. Uh, that would be my main advice. So you have to start training early on and you have to do it systematically. I know it can be very hard and challenging because all of you have their own things to do and worries to worry about, but if you dedicate a quarter of an hour, at least a day, to practice, I'm sure that you will be able to achieve proficiency faster than otherwise. Wojtek, that's been a pleasure. Thank you for talking with us.